In this video, I'll show you how to choose the correct integration method. This is part one of the series. Recall the following techniques. We learned about basic U substitution, integration by parts, powers of trigonometric functions, trigonometric substitution, and lastly, partial fractions. The best way to become an expert at integration is to get lots of practice, and that's just what we'll do in this video. Let's start with question one. We are asked to integrate ln x times sine of angle ln x over x dx. For this problem, you want to start with the easiest of the methods, which is the substitution method. And you can use the letter of your choice. Typically we use u, but I'll use w for this case because this particular function requires two separate techniques. So I'm going to set ln x equal to w and I'll find the derivative of this function. Finding the derivative gives us dw is equal to 1 over x dx. And of course, we've replaced this with w and this with w. Solving for dx gives us dw times x is equal to dx. So let's substitute this into our function where we get the integral of w times sine w, and dx has also changed. So let's replace dx with dwx multiplied by dwx over x. And you'll notice that the x in the numerator position will cancel out with the x in the denominator position. That being said, we are left with the function w times sine w dw. Now what we have to do is integrate by parts. And I'm not going to go through the whole process, but remember when it comes to integrating by parts, you need to choose a u and a dv. The way you choose the u is by using this acronym LIATE, which tells us that algebra or algebraic components of a function get more priority when it comes to choosing your u value. And this is precisely why we didn't choose u to begin with, with the substitution method at the start. So let's pick this component w as our u, and that we will find the derivative of, and dv will equal to sine w dw. And from here you'd use the integration by parts method to find out your final answer. Let's move on to question two. I'm going to give you a second to look at this and think of a method to integrating. What comes to mind for me is to use integration by parts. So what I could do is set u equal to x. Remember x is an algebraic component and it gets more priority than a trigonometric component, sine. And dv will equal to sine squared x dx. This part is easy to derive. We know the answer is du is equal to dx. But this part is not easy to integrate. And in fact, we can use half angle identities to convert this expression into something that is more integratable. Here's what I mean. The half angle identity for sine squared x is equal to, let me write this down, half times one minus cosine two x. So technically I can replace this with the following expression and that will make it easier to find the integral of. So I'm going to replace dv is equal to half of 1 minus cosine 2x dx. And from here, we can use u substitution to find the integral of this expression. Now you may have looked at this in a different way. In fact, you can even start with half angle identities and use integration by parts to integrate from the get-go. For instance, I could have changed this sine squared x into half times one minus cosine squared x and subsequently multiplied the x into these two terms, then used integration by parts to find out the integral of x times cosine two x. Let's move on to question three. I'm going to give you a second to look at this and feel free to pause the screen and come up with a plan to finding the answer. Okay, so here's what I think we have to do. U substitution is a good technique to start with. 
So for instance, I can set this part equal to u, or simply e to the power of x equal to u. Let's see what happens. u is equal to e to the power of x. Taking the derivative, we end up with du is equal to e to the power of x dx. I'm going to substitute this u with this ex, and at the same time, solve for dx. And if I do that, I end up with du over e to the power of x is equal to dx. This gives me the integral of 1 over 1 plus u. And dx becomes du over e to the power of x. Also recall that I set u equal to e to the power of x. So I can replace this with u, giving me the integral of 1 over 1 plus u times u du. Once you have it set up this way, you'll have to use partial fraction expansion. And if you recall, that's when we broke this fraction down into pieces. So for instance, we would set 1 over 1 plus u times u equal to a over this factor, 1 plus u, plus b over this factor, u. And we would have to solve for a and b by finding a common denominator and subsequently finding a and b, which then would make it easier to integrate. And eventually, you would find the answer. Now, some of you may have looked at it in a different way. In fact, you can do this a lot easier if you know this little trick. So let's pretend that we have the same function we started with, and instead of putting dx at the top, I'm going to place it on the side. Now what I can do is I can add e to the power of x and subtract e to the power of x. That hasn't changed my mathematical expression at all. In fact, it means the same thing. And I can group these two terms together, where I end up with 1 plus e to the power of x over 1 plus e to the power of x in the denominator position. And this term gets its own 1 plus e to the power of x dx. This term goes to 1 because you're canceling out two identical terms. And from here, what you could do is use u substitution, just like we did here, by setting this equal to u, finding its derivative, and you'll be surprised on how simple the function becomes to integrate once you've done that. And so there you have it. Three examples on how to choose the correct integration method. Make sure to watch part two for more examples.